Hey all, Tony Bing here, hello and welcome to another beginner's guide for Marvel Heroes Omega. Now with this guide we'll be having a look at Loki, the reason for that is he's been announced to release on console, so it'll be Xbox and Playstation 4 and that will be on Thursday the 19th of October. So if you're watching this video today, the day it goes live, we've really not got long to go before he comes out. He's a fantastic hero, he has a ton of versatility and he's the first hero that I've actually had to do five different gameplay segments to show off all his skills. That really tells you how much he has in his kit. It really is great. Now what we'll cover in the video is we'll look at his talents and traits, we'll check out some of his costumes, we'll have a look at his signature and ultimate, and then we'll have those five gameplay segments. But first up, what we'll do is check out his talents and traits. We'll start off here then looking at his offensive trait, that is Master Sorcerer. So with this you'll gain 25% bonus damage for summon powers and he really does have quite a few in his kit. His main attributes are durability and intelligence. You really want to go for the intelligence because it gives you the crit damage rating and although saying that, if you're going for a melee gram build, something we'll cover later in the video, you possibly want to go for durability for the extra health. When we look at his defensive trait, it's Arcane Shield, so he gains a maximum 1750 health and he gains a rating multiplier to defense and dodge and he also has close quarters, so when you hit with a melee power you gain 8% damage reduction for 3 seconds. When we look at his resource, he still uses Spirit as his primary resource but he has almost a secondary resource, it's called Lord of Lies, so certain powers can summon illusions of yourself which will fight enemies for a short duration. The default number of illusions is 3 but through talents you can actually bump this up to 5. They stick around for 8 seconds, they'll do damage and they're pretty great at tanking for you as well. But what we'll do next is we will check out a few of his costumes. First costume we have here, and this is his default on PCs, a fugitive look. That's the one from the second four movie. It's really pretty nice looking. We then have his classic look. Now, since this video has been made, this will be getting a visual update. So it looks nice at the moment, but it will look much better. And next up, we have one of my favourite Loki costumes. This is a Siege costume. I'm a big fan of this one. Next costume we have, and there's a few in this particular style, this is the Agent of Asgard and I think it's another three costumes in this style you can actually get. And then we finish up with an enhanced costume which is Lady Loki, this is a pretty awesome one, I really do like this one and I know there's a lot of people that are massive fans of this particular costume. But what we will do now that we've covered the costumes is we'll have a look at his signature and ultimate. For the signature we have a skill called Unyielding Power, so with this focus your godlike powers, strengthening the attacks and fortitude of you and your allies. So you apply Empowered to yourself and your allies, works as a dot on a pretty large area around you, does have a high cooldown of 45 seconds, duration is 8 seconds, on top of this you'll be immune to crowd control, you gain damage rating, defence rating and of course as mentioned you've got that Empowered buff as well there. It doesn't look the most visually amazing signature but for what it does it's pretty useful. For the ultimate we have a skill called Norn Stones so he'll take out the Norn Stones and he'll fire off all the power from them. Previously his ultimate used to be where he would turn into a frost giant but everyone hated that so they did change it. This particular one is an improvement but personally I would like to see lots of summons fly in and bat on the enemies as opposed to just whipping out the stones because if you look at the duration on it it's only 4.5 seconds so it's a really quick ultimate it's over very quick the amount of damage it does is pretty big per second and you're vulnerable while using it but it's almost a blink and miss it ultimate but thankfully what we're going to do now is look at his skills and we've got five gameplay segments and these skills more than make up for the slightly lackluster ultimate so let's check out the first set which will be the as guardian skills and his summon skills. For this gameplay segment then as mentioned we'll be looking at the summon and also the as guardian magic skills. Now the main filler we use is spatial deception so this is a staff melee power and when we use this we'll actually summon another clone of Loki as you can see I've got quite a few on screen here at the moment 
And then with this also gains a damage bonus of 10% of your summoned ally damage as well there. The next skill, this is Hard Light Spikes. You'll fire out loads of light spikes from the ground. It looks pretty amazing. The enemies will be vulnerable from it. And on top of that, they actually get 20% vulnerability from Loki's illusion. So this works particularly good with a summon setup. Now you'll notice on the tooltip it mentions something about Gram becoming enchanted with Asgardian magic. That we will look at in a bit more detail when we're into the third gameplay segment. We won't look at it just now, it's pretty great, but we'll check that out in a moment. For the next skill, we're back to summons. We've got Illusionary Projection, so with this one you will summon three illusions for eight seconds, and the illusions actually dash through a particular target. So if you've got five illusions, which is the maximum, you'll be doing five damage portions on this, and it's got a low four second cooldown. The next skill is Refacting Ruin, so this one requires summoned illusions to activate. When you fire it off, you've got the initial damage packet, but all your summons will actually do smaller damage packets as well. So you can get up to essentially 6 hits on this. You've got your damage packet, then you've got the 5 from your summons as well. So it can be great for taking out trash. It does have a pretty high cooldown of 12 seconds. The next skill, and final one actually for this segment, is Asgardian Light. So with this particular one, the power of the Azar erupts from you, regenerating your wounds while stunning foes with your illuminating brilliance. You've got your damage packet, stuns enemies for 2 seconds, and it will also generate health for you as well. But we'll fire off all these skills as we take down Curse, and once he's down, what we'll do is we'll move on to the next segment, which is a run through of Sinister's Lab, and we'll show off his arcane and sorcery skills, but let's take down Curse here. And that is him now down, so let's check out, as mentioned, the arcane and sorcery skills. First skill we look at in this setup here is called Staff Blast, so it's a big green blast of energy that will come out your staff and it actually pierces through enemies as well. This would be a main filler that you could use if you want to go for the arcane sorcery route. The next skill is a dot and it immobilises enemy, this is called Arcane Binding and it actually looks great. You fire this out and it will cover the enemies in chains and it damages them as well, so I really do like this, it's a lot of fun to fire this off and then just fire off all your other dots on top of the enemy while they're immobilised. Now the next skill, it's Lay Waste, so with this one, crush your enemies with a powerful magic surge which is amplified when cast upon enemies suffering from negative effects. So if you use this on enemies that are suffering from either vulnerability or weaken, they'll take additional bonus damage and on top of that you get double damage to enemies in the centre of the target area on this skill. It has a low 4 second cooldown as well. The next arcane sorcery skill we look at is Enthrall, so this one is a Confuse, also works as a dot, lasts for 8 seconds, doesn't actually have a cooldown, that's something that I believe possibly will change because having a Confuse with a cooldown is really powerful as all the Angular players know. Final skill we show off from this side of things is Bouncing Bolt, so this can be great for taking out trash, you fire off this bolt and it will bounce between up to 6 enemies. Repeated hits deal reduced damage to the same enemy, so you don't want to use this on single target. Keep it for when you've got mobs and you've fired off the arcane binding and they're all chained. That combo works particularly well. So we have perfect timing then. We've covered all these skills and we're now up to Mr. Sinister. So we'll fire all the skills off. I will mention for the next three upcoming gameplay segments we will introduce Gram, which is Loki's sword and that actually interacts with his skills as well, so it's a really interesting mechanic there. But let's fire off all these skills on Mr. Sinister and take him down.
And there we go, with Sinister now done, what we'll check out next will be his Jotunheim skills, and these are actually his Frost skills. So as promised, in this third gameplay section we'll have a look at the awesome Gram, which has his legendary sword. So, melee attack, not surprisingly, looks generic enough, the tooltip, but you'll notice it states gains additional effects from enchantments. Now, when you use certain skills, such as the Frost ones, which are classed as Jotunheim magic, you will enchant Gram, and Jotunheim magic will give Gram an additional 15% critical hit chance, and also 25% critical and brutal damage as well. Now, in regards to his cooldown skills, we have Permafrost Spikes. So this one, you have the initial damage packet, slows the enemy by 35%, makes them vulnerable, and on top of that, you can see that it loads Gram with the Jotunheim Magic enchantment there. An enchantment lasts for 20 seconds. The next skill, it's Cold Snap. So if you play Dice Man, this is essentially Frost Nova. It's a great skill. You have the initial damage packet, freezes enemies for two seconds, and it's got a 100% critical hit chance as well. And you can see it also works as a Jotunheim enchantment. This next skill is really pretty interesting, and it can work with all builds. It's called Otherworldly Blast. So you must have an enchantment active in order to activate it. When you activate it, you have the damage packet, it consumes your enchantment, and your next enchantment power used within 15 seconds gains an additional 100% damage. So you want to follow up with one of your high cooldown, hard hitting enchantment powers, and you'll do a ton of damage on that. Now, the actual final skill we'll show off here isn't a Jotunheim skill, but it's a nice skill, so I figured it fitted into this section. It's Glacial Shard. And this is a basic ranged attack that you can use, and it has an increased 15% critical hit chance. But let's now fire off all these skills on Doc Ock. And there we go. With him now down, what we'll do is we'll check out Loki's Hell Magic. With this set of skills then, they're based around darkness and also Hell Magic. So if you were to enchant Gram with Hell Magic, you'll gain 210 life on hit and also 1% health regen per second. So that can be great if you're looking to build them nice and tanky. Now, the first cooldown skill we look at is Eternal Darkness. This one works as a dot. It also applies a weaken. You've got a 3 second terrify on it, which can be great to fire it off on a bunch of enemies. And they'll be terrified and they'll have the dot and they'll just stand there as it works them down. And on top of this, you can have it in three different areas there. The next skill, it's Spirits of the Dead. So this particular one, you've got your 10 hits when you cast this. And the way it works is you conjure a portal and you have all these different projectiles that fire out it and they seek in on the enemy and do damage. You can see it right now, in fact, on screen. Pretty useful, that. Now, it has a 5 second duration, 8 second cooldown, and it will, of course, enchant Gram with Hell Magic. The next skill we have is Soul Crush. This works as a single target dot for 8 seconds, but the effects of it actually transfer to other nearby enemies when the target's defeated. So you can fire this off if you defeat the enemy, it'll start to spread to our nearby enemies, so it's pretty fun in that respect. Now, final skill, we've got Dark Bolts. This is a ranged darkness skill. You can spam this to take out trash, and it bounces between the enemies. So it's, again, another variation of an arcane skill. This hits four enemies in total, and it will also regenerate health for you. But we'll work our way through this level here up to Taskmaster, firing off all these skills.
there we go with Taskmaster down we have the final segment where we show off the fire skills in the Muspelheim enchantment. For this final gameplay segment then we'll be looking at the fire skills and we have the Lady Loki costume so we can do it in style. Now when you use these skills you will enchant Gram with Muspelheim magic. With this Gram will actually do additional damage on hit and on top of that all of your skills gain a 10% damage bonus. Now the first enchantment skill we actually look at is a spammable one that works as a dot, it weakens the enemy, it has an 8 second duration and 3 maximum areas. This is called Internal Flame, it looks pretty amazing to be honest. The next skill, this is a variation of an arcane skill we looked at earlier, it's Incinerate. So it deals its initial damage packet, double damage to enemies in the centre of the target area, and enemies that are vulnerable and weakened, which we've already seen gain additional damage, but on top of that, enemies that are burning will actually gain additional damage as well there. Now the next skill we look at is one that's actually active at the moment, it's Searing Embers. So this is essentially a fire variation of Spirits of the Dead that we looked at in the last section. You've got your 5 hits as objectiles come out, duration is 5 seconds and you also have an 8 second cooldown with it and of course it will load you up with Muspelheim Magic. Final skill we look at is Infernal Binding, which is a variation of an arcane skill. It's the one with all the chains around the enemy. The difference here is it will apply fire and burning, so that can be useful if you have any artifacts that can actually gain a bonus from enemies that are burning. Now, as we're working our way through this level, I'll quickly mention, in the first section we looked at the Asgardian magic. We didn't actually tie that in with Gram and how it works. So if you enchant Gram with Asgardian magic, you gain 15% spirit reduction, and on top of that, you'll gain a flat 20% attack speed. But let's fire off all these fire skills now as we take down Shocker. Here we go, that's him almost done now, and that's now our beginner's guide complete. So this was a nice fun one to do, there's certainly a huge amount of variety with Loki. Absolutely fantastic character, and I can't wait for him to come out. Now, as always, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask below, and I'll see you all again soon.